Hey guys, it's Biggs again. I'm still down here in Homestead with my good friend Rick Bureau from Florida Exotic Fish Sales. <laughs> Rick's been doing this since like the, the late 60s, early 70s. He's one of the, the, the originals that, that started Florida fish farming, specifically with African cichlids. And one thing we're gonna go is some, some of the history of some of those African cichlids that you guys know and everybody knows. You see them at the pet stores all the time, but they might have a different scientific name but you know them from some of their common names, but you won't believe some of the history of their common names and where they came from. And this is the guy that gave a lot of them to them, and some of them have some pretty interesting stories. So, tell me something, Rick. Well, you know, um, we, I'll, I'll just give you a real quick history. We were, my brother and I were both in school in the 70s, late 60s at Florida State University, and that's where we started importing fish. This first, was in Tallahassee. Tallahassee, Florida. So we named our business Tally M Ports. So we would bring in fish. Our first, uh, the reason we started is because we couldn't get any African signals. So we, our first supplier was Peter Davies, and we got a pretty good um, um, assortment of fish, but he was restricted to just what his area wouldn't go anywhere. So I remember then, you telling me the story over dinner one night about uh, the first time you went to Africa. Wasn't that 1969? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys get to the airport, you had to get a haircut at the airport, yeah. otherwise you wouldn't be allowed in the country. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I could go into some other stuff about but you can edit that out. Yeah. But well, on the plane, it was very interesting because there was probably eight um, African Americans there on the plane with long hair and looking hollering. And everything. They had, they were sitting next to us getting their hair cut too. Yeah. <laughs> so because was in Malawi, in Malawi, they they have they had strict uh, uh, rules for dress, for your hair, for how you could conduct yourself downtown. You couldn't hold hands with a, a, a woman. You had to walk. You know, you had to sit there, you had to that. It was a totally different time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, we went over there and talked to Peter Davies and asked him if he would uh, be willing to go to some of the other areas. He was really not into it. He said no. I'll keep shipping you fish, so we were very disillusioned. Heading home, stopped in Blantyre, really kind of depressed, walking down the street, walked by a pet shop, loaded with African cichlids out there. Walked in the door, this guy had a pet shop, his name was Eric Fleet, and we asked him um, if he would be interested in shipping to us. He had a license for the entire lake, and he said sure. So that was the really where the, the odd fish, the new fish came from was this man um, that had the whole lake. In the early 70s, and this so is before. This is probably 19, we started importing the first fish in 1971. We had apartments, we had bed, our bedrooms were turned into fish rooms. It, it was a, a typical fish nerd type situation going to school. But as soon as we graduated in 73, we hit the, hit the we'd already imported fish, we were selling fish, we hit the road and went to Cool. Now, some of these fish that people don't know the names of, the first one that comes to mind is, uh, it's now called Metroclima Lombardi, right, which but everybody in the that. trade knows about it as Ken Yee. Yep. So this was a fish that we originally got from Eric Lee, and he would, at first he was sending the fish to us as two types of fish, the yellow one and the blue one. And only after we went there did we realize when we were catching them that they were the same fish, male and female. Well, we, we, for a while there, we were calling it yellow zebra. Okay. And then what happened was we were on this this farm right here. We moved here in '74. There was a uh, trotter racer that was, um, from Detroit, and he was a fish guy too. And he also used to come to the farm. And he came to the farm one day, and he was talking about heading back to Detroit. He had a trotter horse that really was no good for trotting; could never win. But he didn't really want to take it back. And he, you know, he was looking around. We had five acres here. He said, "Hey, maybe you got it." My brother's wife said, "I'd love to have that horse." brought the horse, his name was Ken. So we named Kenny I after him. So that's how- No started. rhyme or reason. Oh, it was a scientific name. I mean, it, it, was, it was no, there was no rhyme or reason what we did. It was the 70s. It, it was, was the a, 70s. It was a different time. Yes, other fish, we, you know, when we were in um, Tallahassee bringing in fish, we had to rely on friends to help us pick them up at the airport. And so then when we were unloading them, it was a, Yahoo, drinking, other stuff that's going on in the 70s, when we were opening up boxes with a question mark on the top, because the guy had no idea what they were, and we were naming them as we went, so that's... Yes. Well, some of them, uh, VC-10? VC-10 was named after uh, the guy calls up and said, hey, I'm just uh, getting the fish out here, I'm putting them on the VC-10 now, you're going to get a weird looking one with lips and the whole works, and just... I don't know what it is, so when it landed, we called it PC-10. And that was an airplane an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> 
How about uh, marmalade? marmalade? That's not something that you associate with I fish. don't know how, I mean, I know how we came up with marmalade. The cat part of it, I don't know, but um, we were having, uh, over there, the English people eat a lot of weird food, you know, blood pies and all that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> every morning there was marmalade jelly, and they, we just left the house at the uh, fish house, and we had this brand new fuel of morning looking in there with just liquid. And I just, it looks like the female, I said, it looks like that marmalade jelly. It's all so mixed just, up and marked yeah, blotted yeah, colors Brown and, and black stuff. and all that stuff. So we said, hey, that's going to be a cool name. So we called it marmalade. And it, the cat, I don't know where the cat came from. It, 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 maybe this, the mouth or something. I don't know. That, that wasn't you? No. But you caught a lot of those fish zebras because of just honor, uh, honor to where they were coming from, eh? Yes. And for every fish that we have now, that we were, are doing now, there's five fish that came that never made it. Yeah. And for different reasons. We got some along goddess that were the just absolutely most beautiful things in the world. But you could not put them in with another fish. They, they, just they would too, destroy too it. Aggressive, we got yeah. macrothalamus, just yellow, yolk yellow. But just as mean as is, just no good. Yeah. So And you you wanted, uh, they didn't, people didn't have three, four hundred no, gallon aquariums in no. their house. A 20 gallon aquarium, no. 30 gallon aquarium was a big tank then. And back then, people wanted to breed these fish. Now, they did, now it's different, but they wanted two males and 12 females, and you put these along goddess in the tank. They didn't care. They killed everybody. Males, females, <laughs> they didn't give a hoot. They just killed them. But they were gorgeous, but they, they just didn't, um, didn't work out. One of the other ones uh, that's uh, been around forever, it's pretty aggressive, gets pretty big, was uh, the bumblebee. Bumblebee, yes. That's called Crabro now, I believe, right? right? Which I don't ever Well, they do. still call it bumblebee Crabro. That's what I do, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that fish came in again with just females. And, and along the way in the 70s, early 70s, I learned how to turn a fish over a male and determine male or female. By, I call it venting. Um, and I would, you know, you could take an obvious fish in a rod, it's a black male and a yellow female, and you flip them over. So I learned how to flip more. And every single one of the bumblebees we got was a female. Yeah. Appeared female. Right, but, yellow, black bands. But only when we got there did we realize that they were not catching the deep, dark black ones because they thought they, there was nothing to them. Yeah, that was the fish. male. No desire. That, that was, was the, the male. male. And yeah. of course, Bumblebee, we named a Bumblebee for an obvious reason. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> obvious. Yeah. <laughs> to us, it was very obvious. And there was lots of fish that had that same problem with a different colored male, like the, the red zebra yes. was another one. We got red zebras for for a long time with just the blue male. So we were calling red by blue zebra. Okay. But originally we didn't even realize that the blue, the, the male was the blue one. We just got the reds. They were all, but then we saw they're all females. We said, what's going on? Well, in that population, there's blue ones. And only later did they start catching, and, and they would come in very few. Yeah. The red. There's a new fish yes, to them. Yes. yes. And the thing of it is in the population, there was very few of them. Okay. So when we started breeding only red by red for, for a long time, we got reds, blues, and reds. So we had red males, blue males, and red females. But by breeding with the red by red, yep. right now we get all red. Yeah. So it's, it's more desirable. It's been fixed. Yes, yes. Uh, another one was uh, there's a couple of peacocks that have individual stories to them too. Yes. We um, uh, Our main supplier was... Um, Eric Fleet, and his son's name was Robert. So when we got a uh, nice peacock came over here, we named it Roberti. Were they sending just males at the time, or were you getting? No, no, they were sending everything. Okay, everything, males and females, and, and yeah, whatever they could catch it. Uh, they didn't catch. Yeah. How cool is that, guys? Now you got a history lesson on some of these fish from Lake Malawi. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Don't smoke pot and name fish. <laughs>